do not watch this if you want to be a really good artist. Hey guys, today let's talk about two small art techniques and also my concerns and the struggles I always have for art. First, let's talk about how does rhythm work in paintings. The concept of rhythm is pretty simple. Just that don't make a three similar things stay with each other. And also be aware of no three similar negative spaces in between either. When you have the three similar things as to stay with each other, try to play with the large, medium, and small. So one of the things to be large size and occupy the large space. So the other two to be medium and small sizes to occupy the medium and small spaces. Oh, don't get me wrong. The large texture or form doesn't have to be occupied the larger space. It could occupy the small or medium spaces. Just to play around with them. The relation or distance between three of them cannot be similar either, like I said in the beginning. So just to make a two of them to stay closer to each other and the third one to be further. Another thing I really want to talk about is details. I always call something fake details and the real details. The first one is the fake details, which is the 2D details. I mean, I call it the fake details. It doesn't mean it's not necessary. It's really important too. Just to don't focus too much or spend too much time on them. So 2D details are normally the textures on 3D forms. 2D details are boring, but it is really necessary when you're almost finishing a painting. But 2D details are only gonna help you to finish up your painting, but they won't level up the quality of your paintings. For entry-level artists, always like to work on 2D details a lot to make the paintings look busy and cool to show off. But the professional artists only like to work on that at the last 2% of the painting. The second type of the details which I always call it the true details or the real details is a 3D form details. 3D details are way more important because they redirect the lighting, cast the different interesting shadows, and the professional artists like to spend the most time on this step. The perfect example for this 3D detail step you will see on ancient Greece sculptures. Most of them don't have crazy textures, but it is already amazing just by looking at the form change, how they react to different lighting, casting shadows, and they create a really good mood. But this 3D detail step still in the area of showing off the art skills. I think the most important details are the third one, meaning or the story of the painting. There are a lot of amazing paintings or art are really, really simple. They don't have complicated 3D forms and they don't have really busy textures, but the meaning or the story of the artwork or painting delivers really great emotions to audience, like sadness, anger, excitement. This kind of a painting or artwork will stay in your memory forever after only one sight. In my personal opinion, it could be wrong. Entry-level artists always focus on 2D details, and professional artists always focus on or spend more time on 3D forms. But the true masters, they really like to spend more time on the meanings and the story of the artwork. You know what? Sometimes I think a skilled artist, professional artists, spend too much time and energy on showing off the skills to make the artwork look good. So they probably don't have enough effort and time to focus on the meaning of the artwork. For example, nowadays we have really powerful 3D software. We can do whatever we want in the movies, right? Do you think all the movies nowadays are way better were all of them way better than the movies 20 years ago? Not likely. In the movie industry 20 years ago, they didn't have that fancy 3D stuff that were to make their vision come true. So they had to spend more time and work more on the meaning 
and the story for the movie. That's why sometimes I talk to my friends who have dream to do art, but who don't have the fancy art skills. I say, I really envy you guys because you don't have that fancy art skills. So you have more freedom to work on your ideas in the story and the what message you want to deliver. They think I'm joking or mocking them, but actually I'm not. I mean it. Because I think it's really, really hard to unlearn stuff. You've probably been learning art for many, many years. You will feel really, really bad if you have to throw them away or abandon them. Once you are polluted by the great art skills, you cannot go back. This is also why I always struggle. Should I teach my daughter art skills or just let her to be herself? By the way, she's uh, five years old now. I think making great uh, skilled artwork is only for showing off, getting compliments, or even later getting a good paid job. But if you want to make an art that can stay for thousands of years, I don't think you need all that shit. I remember Picasso could draw really, really good portraits when he was only like eight or nine years old, but eventually he abandoned all the art skills and so that he could make amazing art. It's pretty ironic I'm teaching and sharing the art skills in this channel. At the same time, I'm telling you art skills are useless, meaningless, and if you want to be a really good artist, you have to abandon them. Please leave comments below and let me know what you think, and also we can debate on this topic. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.